can react. Mm -hmm. And by that definition, friends, I think we will gladly take the label of revolutionaries. <laughs> In many instances, we alone have dared to say the blindingly obvious. Of course, on some issues, it uh, is now appreciated by others outside of our ranks that we were right all along. When it came to Brexit, this party has always been 100% crystal clear. I remember many times, particularly in the run-up to the 2009 European election, when we were the only party on panel discussions that dared to say that. Likewise, we welcome the fact that while a few years ago we were wreckers for saying we should have an opposition in Stormont, now we have other parties uh, in the ranks of opposition. But TUV are still the people who dare to say the politically unsayable. We're at the end of the party conference season. And where else would you have heard speeches that spelt out clearly the relationship between paramilitarism and the Northern Ireland executive? Where else would delegates have been reminded that just a year ago, a government report, not TUV, but the government, came out and said that there's a party in the government of Northern Ireland which is linked to a terrorist organization, which retains uh, an army council, retains weapons, and has murdered somebody in the streets of our capital city. Isn't it remarkable that in 2016, Northern Ireland is subjected to a pseudo-democratic system which sees representatives of a still-armed terrorist group at the heart of government as of right? And isn't it even more remarkable that so few seem to bother about it, or seem to care. Friends, we owe it to ourselves and to future generations to be able to say that we did something about it. A few weeks ago, the DUP held their annual conference in the Le Mans Hotel. And you may have seen that there was some controversy afterwards, because at the close of the conference, some of the younger delegates broke into a rendition of Arlene's on fire. In the aftermath of that, one of the relatives of those burned to death by the IRA firebombing of the hotel said, that he, said how hurt he was. Um, and it's important to add this, uh, Mrs. Foster phoned that relative and apologized. And her apology was accepted, so that's on record. But what I, I found interesting about the, the whole case was the explanation which was proffered for what happened. Here's what one of the local papers said in one of their columns. One party member told me that some of the DUP dancers weren't even aware of the atrocity at the hotel because it happened before they were born. And he goes on to say this, which really is no excuse for anybody living here, especially those espousing politics. Friends, I wasn't born in 1978 either. But I can tell you this, not only do I know what happened at Le Mans, but if you greet Grace or Hannah Morris in 20 years from now, I will make sure they know as well. Yeah. Yeah. Once you push things like that to the back of your mind, you come to regard politics in this province as normal. And without pushing things like that to the back of your mind, I don't think you could even operate the storming system. It would, as one former representative of this constituency put it, it would turn your stomach. <laughs> on Monday, in all seriousness, in Monday of this week, I had the misfortune to be followed into the lift in Stormont by the Hart Hyde Park bomber. I went into it, somebody came in behind me, I had no control over the doors. <laughs> and I don't particularly enjoy working in Stormont because meeting people like that is part of the occupational hazards of the place. But when I got out of the lift, I couldn't help but think, what became of unionists that can get into the lift with the Hyde Park bomber and their stomach doesn't churn at the thought that they've been in such proximity to somebody who took the lives of others? Then I remembered what the DUP spokesman said to explain them on. We forgot about it. We forgot about it. But having dealt with some of the political context 
in which we operate. I hope that members will indulge me. For a moment, if I mention a good friend who isn't with us this year, and that's George. George never held elected office, but he espoused much of what this party stands for. Much of the best of what the party stands for. He, was, he had a passionate love for his province. He had a conviction that nothing that was morally right, wrong, could be politically right. And he had a sacrificial attitude, which always put the needs of others before his own. There are many in this room from across Northern Ireland who knew George. And anyone who ever asked George to help them with anything, they knew that they got that assistance regardless of where they were. He was a friend, he was a loyalist, but above all else, he was a Protestant, and I miss him. 